once there is a disturbance, the land will recover through a process called ecological succession. And there are two things to look at here. We're seeing the passage of time from left to right. And we're looking at the community up at the top in these pictures and the biodiversity and biomass in the soil underneath. And here's what's happening. Imagine this is a very devastating situation in which all the vegetation was stripped away, the soil was washed away, and you just have bare rock. We're starting out from zero, and we've got this bare rock. But eventually, there are going to be bacteria that start to live on the rock, and the wind will carry in lichens and moss and other organisms that can live on bare rock. As the rock starts to weather, and as the organisms start to photosynthesize, you get more and more organic matter and eventually on the rock you have small amounts of soil. This is in part two. As soon as there's enough soil, some seeds that are carried by the wind will be able to take root, and you'll have grasses and other very small plants growing in little cracks and depressions in the rock. Eventually, the moss and lichens will give way to vegetation. Once this vegetation is here, even just a few grasses and small plants, it will begin to attract insects and small animals and possibly even birds. And these organisms will leave their droppings. They will sometimes die and decompose on the spot. And the amount of organic matter in the soil will get built up. And as you build up more soil, you retain more moisture, you can have larger plants with deeper roots. Eventually you might have some shrubs, and at some point these shrubs will give way to trees. And finally, you'll return to the climax community, the forest that was there before everything got stripped away. And the key is in this picture you're seeing what's going on above the surface. Underground you're looking at what's really happening, the soil is being built up. And you'll learn a lot more about soil when we talk about plant science in a few weeks. But you can notice at the beginning when there's just bare rock you have very little biomass or biodiversity in the soil layer. And as you get through these stages of ecological succession it builds up until you finally have your climax community and the soil is very deep and thick and rich at that point. We call this primary succession and we call it primary because it starts from bare rock where there's no soil and I've outlined here what I just told you that there's bacteria, lichens, and moss begin to grow and there's an accumulation of organic matter that eventually lets a mature climax community take hold. Now these steps in which the ecosystem changes from bare rock to a forest are called sears. So you have one sear is a step or a stage in this process and there are some very clearly identified sears. Let's look at another situation here we've got our forest, it's green and happy, the sun is shining, and then there's a fire. And the fire burns up all the trees and all the vegetation, and now you've got nothing. However, we haven't stripped it down to bare rock. The soil is still there. There's probably a lot of ash and maybe even some debris, so you've got soil. You're not starting with bare rock. And for this reason, we call this secondary succession. So remember that primary succession starts with bare rock. Secondary succession, you've got bare soil. And now the sun is shining, there's probably some moisture and some seeds in the soil, and grasses begin to grow. And these grasses, once again, they attract birds and insects. The grasses grow, they die, they decompose, more grass grows, dies, and decomposes. And you're building up some organic matter, building up the soil. And eventually you have soil that will support shrubs and small trees. And eventually these trees start growing taller and they dominate over the grasses and the small plants. And finally you return to the climax community where you have the tall trees with a few other plants growing underneath. In this case we started with bare soil, not from bare rock. So secondary succession is a little easier and quicker to take place and it, it's a little more predictable because you've got some soil there already to work with. Here's a little summary that I just, just like what I told you. And each of these steps is called a sear. So the grass phase is a sear.
Then you have some scrub and brush, and that's a sear. Then you've got a very young, immature forest as a sear. And finally, the mature forest sear, or the climax community. It's also worth noting that agriculture kind of imitates this process. Oftentimes, the land that you can grow the best grains on was originally forest. And once a forest was cleared away, these grasses can grow really fast. And of course, the grass you would plant would be corn or wheat or oats or some other crop. And the idea is you keep plowing it and keep harvesting it every year so that all this energy that ultimately was meant to produce a forest will just go into producing crops. And this is how we can get a great abundant harvest. Here's a picture of ecological succession. This is actually in a field in Poland that has been abandoned. So there were grains growing here. And because no one's tending the fields, the shrubs have begun to grow. And you can even see some trees starting to take hold. And in a few more decades, this area, assuming it, all things are being equal and nothing new disturbs it, this will become a forest.